This heart that is now yours You can have it all, Lord Every part of my world Take this life and breathe on This heart that is now yours All the joy I found Surrendering my crowns At the feet of presence would just fall. Or fall on our house and fall on every house around our city, around our nation, and around the earth. Lord, that your Holy Spirit would just move through the streets, God. God, we want to see more of you. We want to experience your glory. We speak healing, we speak life, and we speak love. Caught up in your presence, I just want to sit here out of your feet. Just say another song. Take me back to where we started. I open up my heart to you. Oh, I'm sorry when I've come with my agenda. I'm sorry when I broke up. I'm 
God of this city. You're the king of these people. You're the Lord of the nation. As you are. You're the light in the darkness. You're the hope to the hopeless. You're the peace to the restless. You are. Oh, there is no one like our God. There is no one like our God. Greater things have yet to come. God of this city, you're the king of these people, you're the Lord of this nation, you are, you're the light in the darkness, you're the hope to the hopeless, you're the peace to the restless, yes Lord you are. All right, good morning, guys. Thank you for joining us on Facebook Live. Uh, we are really excited to be streaming into your living room, homes, wherever you're at watching this. So I have a couple of announcements before I do my little sermon. You know, I always, I always wanted to be able to preach in house shoes, and today I had that luxury. So uh, just be glad that I, <laughs> that I put on some normal clothes instead of the sweatpants that I've been wearing for the last four days. So <clears throat> we're going to be posting a video every night at 8.30. So be on the lookout. Every night at 8.30, you can tune in and watch a video. Uh, we're going to have members of our leadership team share these videos, share what God's speaking to them. You can expect that every day that they're going to be around five minutes, anywhere between a couple of minutes up to five, six, seven minutes. So you can imagine, you can expect that they'll be short. On Wednesdays, we'll be sharing a slightly longer message on Wednesdays at 8.30. And then obviously Sunday is gonna be a little bit longer as well. Uh, we're gonna be posting worship throughout the week. We're working with Travis and Caitlin to post worship and with Chance. And, and so just be on the lookout for our worship. Uh, in case you're wondering, uh, or in case you're wanting to give, uh, you can give on the Living Waters website. 
uh, I think there's a button that says give. And so if, if you're, if you're trying to figure out how to do that, just know that you can give on the website. So I'm going to talk about one thing that we feel is very important for us in this time, because as many of you know, that largely what we do is based on the presence of God. We focus everything around the presence. The reason that we get together is the presence. When we show up, it's the most important thing. We value it higher than everything else. So you have to be asking this question. Okay, so what do we do when we can't gather? So <clears throat> we really felt strongly this call and this uh, this urge to bring people in to, sorry, we're not bringing anybody in anywhere, but to encourage people to worship in their homes, you know, because you guys know this is what's even funny about the fact that we're videoing this right now, because, you know, we say this all the time. We don't gather around a sermon. We don't gather around uh, a pastor. We don't gather around uh, even good music. We gather around the presence of God. And so it's like for us to be, uh, you know, putting out, putting out sermons, it's almost just not even really the main reason that we exist. And so uh, I really want to encourage you uh, every day. This is not, I'm not telling you this because it's good advice. I'm not telling you this because it's just what I should say as a pastor. It's what I believe the Lord is calling us to do is to start these, uh, these house fires, these, these moments in our homes where God will move sovereignly in, in our homes. So I encourage you to, to turn on worship, pick up a guitar, whatever it is. I know we have so many people in our, in our community who are gifted musically. Pick up, pick up a guitar, worship, turn on. I, I use YouTube, so I'll play YouTube on my TV and we'll worship. But create these living room revivals, these places in your own home of your own homes where God can move. So just, just know that that's what we're focused on and that's what God's calling us to do right now. So like I said, we don't really gather around sermons, so I want to share with you guys a, a short message, <clears throat> something that God's been speaking very clearly to me for about a week now. So the this whole sermon is just about being childlike. And you may be asking, well, why, why are you not preaching about the virus or why you're not preaching about this or why you're not preaching about that. And, and the reason is because God's not preaching to me about a virus. He's, he's speaking to me about becoming childlike. And you might think, well, that's immature. And I would argue that some of the most mature believers I know are the most childlike, not childish, childlike. And so I think that, uh, I think it's important. Here's why, you know, I've been spending this pretty much this whole week at home our bit in our business, you know, all of our weddings have been postponed. So I've been with my family quite a bit. Mabry hasn't once asked me if the bills are going to get paid. Mabry's my daughter, by the way. She hasn't asked me once this week if she needs to be worried about getting sick. She hasn't asked me this one, uh, once this week if we're going to run out of food. She hasn't asked me uh, what we're going to do about this toilet paper problem that seems to be uh, prevalent all throughout our city and nation. Um, and she hasn't been in a state of anxiety this week. And I think that that's because of the innocence and the childlikeness. And it's also because she has a faith and a trust that we're going to provide. And I think that if we would become childlike in this time, we could approach God in such a way where we could be full of peace, full of joy, and really like experience this time completely differently than the rest of the world because we're children of God and the benefits that come along with being children of God. So I kind of want to talk about this for just a second. So I think it's, it's really important for us to understand that kids, uh, they're going to display the nature of their parents. So, you know, I saw this post on Facebook and I think it's just important for us to, for me to even quote it. It says that your kids, it said that your kids won't remember people getting sick or people having to stay inside and not being able to leave, but they will remember how the atmosphere of their home felt. 
what that means is, is exactly what it says that your kids, your kids, they may not remember that people got sick. They may not remember what happened, but they're going to remember how they felt. You know, whenever uh, 9-11 happened in, back in 2001, I was a fourth, third or fourth grader. And I, I remember seeing it on the news. But the thing that I really remember is when I came home that day, my dad wasn't home yet, but my mom was in the kitchen. She was cleaning and she started crying. And I could tell that she was scared. And that's whenever it communicated this message to me of, oh no, something's really wrong. And I think it's important for us to realize that that's how our kids are experiencing this time. The way that we act at home, our thoughts, our behaviors, even you know what, what's, what we're partnering with, uh, what's coming off of our TV, our kids are gonna remember that. They're gonna remember the way that it made them feel and they're gonna remember the way that we felt. And so, it's just important, I'm gonna tie this in really later, but it's important for us to, to check where we're at and check our hearts because that same atmosphere is being released in our homes. And here's what's crazy is if, if we're allowing this fear in, then our kids are gonna respond because they're gonna do what they see us doing. If, if we're afraid, they're gonna be afraid. Um, and so it's, it's just, it's just uh, it's important for us to realize this. And so here's, here's where this really matters is because our response is gonna be the same to whatever we allow our source to be. You know, especially at the first this week, I was watching the news a lot. I just wanted to stay informed. I wanted to know what they were saying and I wanted to know what was happening. And so I had the news on. I mean, I watched the news at the first of this week probably more than I have. I'm not gonna tell you how long, but in a very long time put together. I watched the news more this week than I have in a long time put together. And I thought, wow, this is why people are so afraid. Because if I turn off the news and I get alone with the Lord, I, I'm like, great. And I think that the reason that this is so important in this time is that when we get alone with God, we're gonna see what he's doing. We're gonna see what he's saying. And we're gonna to begin to reproduce those things. And we're gonna to begin to do what he's doing and to say what he's saying, because it's the nature of children to do what their parents are doing and say what their parents are saying. And so that's what it's, you know, it's important for us to understand right now is that God is not shaken by this. You know, we, we keep saying it. He's not shaken. He's not concerned. He's not caught off guard. I mean, honestly, every time I pray and say, God, how do you, you know, what's happening right now in heaven? What, what, how do you see this? What's your response to this? And the, and the thing that I keep saying is that he is celebrating and he is excited. And that might sound extremely offensive to you. Um, but I think that he's excited and he's celebrating because there's, there, because this is the exact opportunity for him to, move and speak to people and touch people and move in people's lives in a way that he never has before because everyone's being shaken right now. And when you get shaken, you get left in this place where you have to ask real questions about who God is and what you believe about him and, and what you're going to do about that. So in John five nineteen, Jesus was making this statement. You know, he said, very truly, I tell you, I only do what I see my father doing. And he says, whatever the father does, the son also does. And so we see Jesus' life, you know, we all say, well, what would Jesus do? What would Jesus do? And we try to do what he did. Well, we're never going to get anywhere trying to do what he did. The only way that we're going to get where we need to go is if we, if we spend time with the Father and we do what the Father is doing, not what Jesus did. I know that sounds controversial, but the only thing that Jesus' actions were only because he saw what the Father was already doing. And so we have to be in this place right now. It's more critical than ever that we're spending time with the Father so we can see what the Father's doing, so we can do what he's doing, so we can hear what he's saying and say what he's saying. And so it, here's just an example in case you don't believe me. Uh, I have this really bad habit, and I don't, wouldn't call it a habit. I don't, I've never chewed tobacco. But sometimes whenever I walk outside, I spit on the ground and I don't know why I don't know I, I don't even know why but I just I'll spit I'll, I'll sometimes walk outside and I'll spit so the last few days I've carried mayor uh, out to our mailbox to get the mail and as soon as we walk outside I'll I'll spit I'll spit on the ground 
Well, then Mayer will start, he'll start, he'll, you know, he doesn't know how to spit, but he'll start making the same sound with his mouth and he's doing it over and over. And God was speaking to me and he was saying, he's only doing what he's seeing you do. It's the nature of him as your son. He's only doing what he sees you do. And that's what we have to understand is that when we spend time with God, we're going to do what we see him do. And so you can, you can have the best intentions to be Christ-like all day, but you're not going to do what he's doing if you're not with him. Mayer would never have had the idea to spit on the floor had he not been with me to see me do it. Now, obviously, this is a really stupid, weird example, but what I'm saying is, is had Mayer not been with me, had Mayer not seen me spit, had Mayer not uh, watched me do it, he would have never have been inclined to do the same thing. And so it's just the nature of kids. And so we, we can't go out and be Jesus to the world right now when the world really needs it if we're not getting with him and seeing what he's doing and seeing what he is, listening to what he's saying, because we can't do what he's doing. We can't say what he's saying if we're not getting time to be with him. So this is, <clears throat> this is really what I, I wanted to focus the most of this little message on right here is, is right now there's, <clears throat> there's, there's fear of, of unknowns and there is you know there's so many things right now that you could partner with you know I think a lot of people aren't so much afraid of getting sick there's a population that is afraid of getting sick but I, I think some people aren't so much afraid of getting sick as they are just what could happen because people are getting sick whether that's financial or or related to any sort of food or provision uh, financial financial type stuff um, the, the fear isn't maybe that you're afraid of getting sick. It's you're afraid of everything else. But I think in this season, we need to position ourselves as children. And this is really what God's been speaking to me is when we're, this is how we need to approach him right now. The Bible never says, there's never a place in the Bible where, where God says, come to me as an expert. Come to me as an expert. Actually, in Matthew 18, verse 3, it says, Truly I tell you, unless you change and become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. And I think there's something about, I really even think that there's unique encounters for us in this time. If we will change the way that we think, you know, we come to God and we, we want to come to God as an expert. We want to come to God with, Here's what that means. Well, that I just know how to pray the perfect prayer. Um, well, I just really know what's wrong right now. And, or I, I come to God in such a way where I pretend like everything's okay. And I brush over what's really going on. You know, uh, <laughs> Mabry, uh, we try to limit the amount of time that she has on pads, <laughs> iPads. And, but if she's, if she's like painting, which she's really got into painting on the iPad lately, if she's painting on the iPad, she walks up to me and says, Hey dad, and the, and the iPad dies, it runs out of batteries. And she says, daddy, iPad, iPad's dead. iPad's dead. And she knows that I'm going to fix it. And it, there's, she's not concerned that it's dead. She's not worried. She knows that I'm going to take it, that I'm going to plug it in, that I'm going to power it back on. And, and she just knows that when she has a problem, that she comes to me to bring a solution. And I think the same thing is for us is like right now in this time, when you're feeling uncertain, when you're feeling like, oh my gosh, how are we going to make it? You need to come to him as a child hey, God, you know what? I'm just here right now. I, I'm just here as a child. I don't have all the answers. I don't have all the solutions. Can you fix this? Or at least can you give me some comfort and some hope? So, you know, I was, I was thinking about this also. When we assume the position of a child, we get to be found by him. An expert never gets to be found. A, a servant never gets to be found. But when we assume this position of being childlike, 
we get to be found by the Lord. You know, the other day I was, uh, I don't know what I was doing, but I wanted to see where Mabry was because she was, she wasn't in the living room. She was playing in her room and Mabry's nearly three years old, just in case you don't know. And she, she was like playing with dolls in her room. And I walked in there and I sat down across from her and I said, Mabry, I love you so much. And she said, I love you so much, daddy. And I said, I'm so proud of you. And you know, she'll just, she just repeats whatever I say back to me. So I say amazing things to her. So she'll say it back, but <laughs> I'm just kidding. You know, I'm telling her how proud of her I am and all these things. And I walked out of her room and I read and, and God spoke to me and he said, he said, Dallas, when you become like a child, you get to be found. You get to realize that I, I also pursue you. Even when you're not looking for me, I'll come find you and find ways to speak to you. Here's, the, here's another thing about being, being childlike is that kids don't have to have all the answers. So I love this, uh, I love this here in, in 1 Kings. And in case you're wanting to read along with me, I'll go to 1 Kings chapter 3. But we see this, we see this, uh, we see this moment right after Solomon has become king. So David has said, hey, I'm going to make Solomon king. And if you, a little background on King Solomon, because King Solomon is considered the wisest person to have ever lived. And he was the king. So it was like Saul, David, Solomon. And Solomon was David's son. So Solomon gets put in this place. He becomes king. And he has this dream. And so he has this dream and it says, this is uh, 1 Kings 3 verse 5. It says, At Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon during the night in a dream. And God said, ask for whatever you want me to give you. I love this story. He says, ask for whatever you want me to give you. And, you know, more than likely, if God walked into this room, <laughs> let, let, let's say that, that somebody really important came to me and said, ask me for whatever you want and I'm going to give it to you. I'm probably going to feel pretty important. I'm probably going to feel like an expert. But we, we see Solomon's reply. God says, ask for whatever you want me to give you. Verse 6, Solomon answered, you have shown great kindness to your servant, my father David. Because he was faithful to you and righteous and upright in heart, you have continued this great kindness to him and have given him a son to sit on his throne to this very day. Verse 7, Now, Lord my God, you have made your servant king in place of my father David. This is the key verse for us this morning. But I am only a little child and do not know how to carry out my duties. Your servant is here among the people you have chosen, a great people, too numerous to count or number. So give your servant a discerning heart to govern your people and to distinguish between right and wrong. For who is able to govern this great people of yours? The Lord was pleased that Solomon had asked for this. So God said to him, since you have asked for this and not for a long life or wealth for yourself, nor have asked for the death of your enemies, but for discernment and in, my, in administering justice, I will do what you have asked. I will give you a wise and discerning heart so that there will never have been anyone like you, nor will there ever be. Moreover, I will give you what you have asked for. Both, I will give you what you have not asked for, both wealth and honor, so that in your lifetime you will have no equal among kings. So <clears throat> we see this, we see this verse in, uh, we see this, this moment in history where God asked Solomon, he says, what do you want? I'll give you anything that you want. Just ask. And he could have said, give me riches. He said, could have given me honor, make me the greatest king of all time. But instead he, he's the first thing he says is I am but a child. I am but a child. He didn't say, you know what? I, I'm an expert and I know exactly what I need. He said, I am but a child. So give me discernment. And the Lord end, ends up, because of the posture that he comes to the Lord and because of the question that he asks, the Lord ends up giving him not only discernment that he asks for, but he gives him everything that he didn't ask for. And so <clears throat> I just want to encourage you this morning that whatever your uncertainty is, 
come to him as a child. And it's, it's really almost even meditative. It's almost, um, I'll tell you what I do is I'll turn on music um, and I will sit down and I'll think, cause you know, a lot of times we turn on worship and like, we want to, we want to get wrecked or we want to encounter God or we have all these like weird agendas. And lately I've just turned on my worship music and I begin to worship. And instead of doing anything else, I just say, God, I'm here with you as a child. And I think about if I was holding my daughter and how she would come to me in this place just because I'm her father and she wants to be held and coming to God in such a way where I'm like, God, I'm, I'm just a child. And maybe right now, the thing that you need to do is you have a thousand questions. What's going to happen? You have a thousand questions of all the things that are going on. There's so much uncertainty and there's never been a more important time for you to come to God and say, Lord, I'm but a child. I'm nothing more than a child. And will you, will you, will you, will you position my heart in that way and then position your own heart that way for him to speak to you? You know, I said it, I said it at the first, <clears throat> there's, there's, uh, we think that, we think that, uh, and then I think Joaquin Evans said this, you know, the goal in Christianity is not to become an expert, but it's to become a child. And I think that there's something for us to realize that God isn't looking for us to, to mature into experts. He's not looking for us to mature into great teachers or great leaders or all of these things. And he, he may, he may, he may turn us into those things, but I think he's growing us into becoming more childlike, moving us into this place where we say, Hey, you know what? My, I, I know who, I know who God is. And so I want to challenge you to take some time after this video and turn on some worship music and come to God as a child where you have been coming to him um, in any other way, just come to him as a child. And I really, this is what I really believe is it's going to set us up for encounters and it's going to set us up to be leaders during this time. And it's going to set us up to see God move in such an incredible way. God is getting ready to move in such an amazing way in the middle of this. And the only way that it's going to happen is if we come to him as a child and say, Lord, I don't know anything. I know nothing. I'm but a child. And allowing him to show us what he's doing, show us what he's saying, showing us how to act so that the world will look at us and say, you know, how are they okay right now? How are they unshakable? How do they have so much peace? How is their house okay? Um, how is everything working out for them? And it's only because we... We've, we've come to God as a child. Uh, we've gotten peace. We have um, become innocent and we've been reproducing things in our lives that other people are going to be envious for. And so my, I'm going to pray for you guys if you're listening. God, that you would mature us into childlikeness, that we wouldn't overcomplicate things, that we wouldn't make things too difficult. And I pray for every person who's watching right now that they would experience your perfect love as their father. For those who need peace right now, that they would receive peace in Jesus' name. God, I pray for every person who's watching right now uh, that needs comfort, that is worried. I pray for anyone who might have lost their job or is, or is, or is underneath the threat of losing their job, that they would know that you're their provider, that you're gonna comfort them. And God, I just pray right now for um, an increase in childlikeness in Jesus' name. Amen. I love you guys. Be looking out for our videos this week. Be blessed. Amen.